Second City Studio Theater in Hollywood. At this moment, please make sure that your cell phone is either off or in silent mode, and no talking or texting during the show. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we did, we did 
hit the clients up. Yeah, we <laughs> and, and, and are you smoking? Yes, we are. But we're nowhere near as smoking as you are, Tits. <laughs> Excuse me? I, I'm the director for Digital Campaign Strategy, and I also am your boss. Yeah, a chick boss. A chick boss. <laughs> <laughs> I work for a dame. <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, you guys need to watch your tone, all right? Tone. Tone? Yeah. I like the sound of that. Yeah. I mean, I tried calling you guys, but you didn't answer. Mm -hmm. You think we're going to take our phones to lunch? Yeah, of course we didn't answer. We were far away, but not very far away from the martinis. Mm -hmm. I called your cell phones. Your cell phones. Yes, your Blackberries, didn't you take your phones with you? Cell phones? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, Space Cadet. Yeah, there's a phone you can take with you wherever you go. <laughs> the Mercury 7 has nothing on you. <laughs> there's a little chicken poo here. Yeah. There's a very sexy chicken poo. Hey. hey. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I just bought a car. It cost me $3,000. <laughs> I'm very rich. Dig me, chicken poo. <laughs> so, I think I know what's going on here. Jerry, what year is this? It's, uh, well, you see, it's, uh, it's, it's June 1965. Yeah, it is. They, they still think it's the 1960s. Oh, we don't think it's the 1960s. We are living in the 1960s. <laughs> Shame about Kennedy. Mm. All right. <laughs> Get down to business here, all right? Let's do it. Yeah. Every time the Mad Men comes on, you guys just think like, oh, it's the 1960s, but it's not the 1960s, all right? It is right now, it is today, it is 2012, it is not yesterday. Today sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we don't even have a nickname for the time we're in. No, I mean, what is it, the teens? Yeah, what was that last decade, decade called, the O's or the odds? Yeah, who knows? The 60s were the 60s. Even the name sounds sexy. It's sexy. sexy. But not as sexy as you, Chicky Poo. I'm rich. I have a three thousand dollar car. Yes, yes, I know that you paid three thousand dollars for your dots, and now and you bought it from your mom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> guys, guys, put the drinks down. Put out the cigarettes. Thank you. No, 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 no flasks. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, I'm going to miss the 60s. Okay, look. I'm going to miss them. I'm not going to miss the smoking. Mm. And I'm not going to miss the institutionally accepted racism. Yeah. Mm. We'll come back to now. Is there still racism? Only if you're wearing a hoodie. <laughs> All right. 
like, chill out. I can take care of this. Yeah, yeah you're probably right. <laughs> Walton just saved your life, you miserable piece of crap. <laughs> Damn it, kid. You gotta level with me here, all right? Okay, listen, all right? Confession's the only thing that can save your ass right now. All right, right you piece of garbage! Get in the head! Hey, 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 don't with me! Sit down! That is a compass, Holden. This piece of filth confessed to everything. Good work, Garcia. Where'd you find him? He was hiding out on the bargain rock at an ancient abbey. <laughs> Martin's death was caused by his hoodie? <laughs> <laughs> I'll delve into that topic in a minute, but first, I'd like to introduce my first guest, a young boy who says he has been the victim of bullying. Please welcome Eugene Smertz. <laughs> Have a seat, Eugene. <laughs> welcome. Tell us about this alleged bullying incident. I would love to be rolled up. So I was walking, <laughs> and I was going from history class over to my chess club, which was a very interesting walk. And I was just minding my own business, you know, just, just paying attention to myself. But all of a sudden, I heard these people behind me, it was these, these mean boys, and they started saying things like, like, study this, nerd. And then before I knew it, my feet left the ground, and, and, and I felt this burning, this painful sensation right in my butt crack. What happened? <laughs> Geraldo, I was on the receiving end of a level seven wedgie. Oh my god, <laughs> that sounds terrible. The paramedics, they had to remove my underwear with the jaws of life. <laughs> when I got to the hospital, the doctors, they, they said that it was the worst wedgie that they ever measured. It was 9.1 Zuckerbergs. <laughs> 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 I'd like to feel sorry for you, but I'm afraid I just can't. I, I do notice that you're wearing a pocket protector. So? Well, Eugene, you see, only nerds wear pocket protectors, and only nerds get wedgies. Just like only violent black youths wear hoodies, and that's why they're shot by neighborhood watch commandos. I mean, duh. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not at fault for my own wedgie. Oh, I'm not blaming you, Eugene. I'm blaming the pocket protector. <laughs> Just take it off right now. No, this is where I keep my pens. Okay, I like to have them close to my body so I can reach them. Well, that's a very valid reason. <laughs> is that Stephen Hawking? Where? Over there! Are you? Oh, really? No, I'm oh, kidding! You both oh, on yourself! No! Where are you? I got it! Get the wedgie! No, Next week we'll no. talk about shirt skirts! No, are they a fine garment to wear or do they just invite rape? No! What? <laughs> Hedge fund managers have been forced to take second jobs 
as obscenely well compensated Wall Street executives. <laughs> Due to online competition, Best Buy plans to close most of its big box stores and focus on mobile stores selling smartphones, computers, and tablets because there's no competition in that area. <laughs> uh, the recall election is moving forward against Scott Walker, the Wisconsin governor who gutted collective bargaining rights for state employees. He's asking voters to rally in support of him. In essence, Walker is asking voters to collectivize their bargaining power so that he can keep his job. The department store Kohl's announced they'll be launching a line of clothes inspired by American Idol. You can find the Steven Tyler design collection in the over 60 women's department. <laughs> received a heart implant, a transplant, <laughs> here to explain <laughs> is his cardiologist, Dr. Alan Spire. Dr. Alan Spire. Hi, George. Thanks for coming, Doctor. Vice President Cheney is 71 years old. Uh, is it too old for a man like this to get a heart implant, a transplant? I've heard that the cutoff age for a transplant is usually 65. Well, where did you read that? I Googled it. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, you can't trust everything that you read on the World Wide Web, George, okay? I mean, I'm a medical doctor. I know these things. I solemnly swear, okay, everything was above board. Doctor, your hand is trembling. <laughs> I'm sure you're supposed to have steady hands. Yeah, that's just another medical myth. <laughs> that's true. I haven't slept for 72 hours because <laughs> I was in the ER. You are a cardiologist. There are very strict procedures for organ transplants. What I want to know is, did the vice president go through the same process as everybody else? Yes. Okay, I met him a year ago when he first signed up for his transplant. Wait, wait, wasn't it two years ago? <laughs> Whoa, George, what's with all the gotcha questions? I'm <laughs> sorry, he went on the transplant list two years ago. So who's your pick for March Madness? Look, I, <laughs> do, you not, do you not know if the vice president went through the proper protocols? I, you know, I... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was, uh, I never actually met him personally. I woke up and I was in a compound. <laughs> there were these people, George, and they were all over the place, assistants or something, with clipboards, and they were, they were asking me, they told me that, that I had to do a job, that's what I was there for, and I wasn't supposed to answer any questions. I haven't seen my family, George, I haven't seen my mom, and I, I miss them, George. I, I, Can I help you? No, Mr. Caliotis. Mm. Do, do you know this person by no, your spirit? No, George, no, I don't. I, I never seen this person. Well, we're trying to do a, a show here. Would you like to have a seat? All right, you. This part of the show is over. Dr. Spear had a previous engagement. I am now the head nurse. Thank you. <laughs> what is going on? Questions. Ooh. I have questions, Mr. Caliotis. I might have a few questions for you. The credit card statement said you spent some time in Bangkok, the red light district. Care to elaborate, or do you want me to show the video? The CIA, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Give my best to the vice president. <laughs> On the campaign trail this week, Mitt Romney commented that Russia is America's number one enemy. This whole thing uh, about Russia being America's number one enemy, it seems, um, I don't know, like, uh, a little 1980s. Listen, you political lady, watch my wallet. I'm Mitt Romney, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Russia is the biggest threat to the United States of America. They own half of Germany, and they won't tear down that goddamn wall. If I was president, first thing I'd do is call Mr. Putin and say, hey, tear down that goddamn wall. There's so much wrong with what you just said. <laughs> Don't waste your breath. Better yet, save your breath. Those goddamn aerosol cans are destroying the ozone. Okay, see what I mean? You know what? You're right. I'm sorry. Let's relax. Let's listen to some music. Have some cassettes over here. I got uh, Duran Duran, George Michael. Oh, wait, better yet, brand new. Never been heard of. They're going to be huge. Remember their names. Talking heads. I'm <laughs> wrong that you just proved my point. You're out of touch. God damn it, I'm sick and tired of people saying I'm out of touch. But someone out of touch on the brand new VHS of Police Academy. Their first assignment. <laughs> <laughs> 
You should tell her to smoke cigarettes. I did! Yeah. And she said she didn't want to talk about her pooping. Didn't want to talk about anything down there. Oh. Obviously, because she's probably got one of those. Oh, up we don't need this, this is good. No. <laughs> TMI. <laughs>
exposing millions of email addresses, passwords, and other data. How this will affect the lives of servicemen and women is yet to be known. I had a really nice tie with you, Fred. Oh, Sergeant Fred. <laughs> Sergeant Fred. Thank you, Patrick. I also had a very nice time on the date with you. It's the first time I've dated a civilian. Oh, whoops, look at me. I'm flipping back into military talk. Well, it's, it's, it's very arousing to me. <laughs> <laughs> Website, uh, Sergeants for Privates. <laughs> a fulfillment of something that I really wanted to do since I was a, a, a small kid. See, I've never told anybody this on a date, but um, I'm, I've stuck G.I. Joe in places I shouldn't have <laughs> Dear me, I will admit that this is the first time I Dated a civilian. Uh, normally, I date other people in the service. So you um, you've only dated people that you've served. With. Yes, yes. Well, if you consider dating anonymous sex in portable showers in Afghanistan, then yes, I will not date. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have a really, a really nice time. With you. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> here we are. This is my place. This is a a simple tent in an alley. <laughs>
the Mike Tyson experience. You killed the Mike Tyson experience. <laughs> performing at their convention, we have a musical sensation that reflects today's Republican Party. Ladies and gentlemen, the C Sharp! Uh, he's not even conservative! <laughs> <laughs> from me, it's finally Ronald Reagan. At best, he nearly lost a part and um, <laughs> But we <laughs> gotta be united. This convention can't be brokered. That's a losing hand of poker. See, no, it's a very high beer. It hasn't got the good season alone. But the G O P is kind of desperate. But hold on, 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 Welcome to the hottest game in the land. It's constitutional. And now your host, Jeff Willery. Welcome to It's Constitutional, the game where it does decide whether a given law is constitutional. Now, today, debating the merits of Obama's Health Care Reform Act, it's the Supreme Justices of the Supreme Court. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's our pleasure having you. Well, let's get right to this. In our first round, we'll be dealing with the constitutionality of arguing the constitutionality of the health care reform law. So, it's constitutional. You might want to wait for me to ask a question, Justice Alito. Uh, okay. Let's get started. Uh, according to the Anti-Injunction Act, the merits of a tax cannot be argued until the tax goes into effect. Is that constitutional? Yes, Justice Breyer. Matt. Yes. <laughs> what is constitutional? Are you asking what does the Anti-Injunction Act say is constitutional, or are you asking that? No, I'm asking the question in the form of the question. <laughs> Idiot, this is jeopardy. Why don't you blow it out your bunghole, Thomas? <laughs> Chuck, I, I would like to rule that uh, that uh, answer is uh, inadmissible. Judges? Yes. Yes. No, I mean the game show judge. Mm -hmm. oh, judges. <laughs> That's correct! Okay, uh, Justice Breyer, you are right. It is constitutional to argue that a tax is in unconstitutional before it takes effect. Yes, it is constitutional, but is it constitutional calling a reform act a tax? You're way ahead of me, sister. Thank you, Judge Sotomayor. Uh, she has already asked the question, is it constitutional to consider the health care reform law a tax? <laughs> Justice Kagan. That depends, Chuck. Depends on what? Depends on whether or not the Reform Act is a tax. Uh, Ooh, sorry, Justice Kagan. No, Justice Scalia. Oh, okay. Although there are elements of tax penalties in the mandate, it is unconstitutional to call the law a tax. You are correct. Very good. Ah, uh, Justice Breyer. Uh, Ten thousand dollars for Pope. Man, this ain't jeopardy. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we shut my dick off. We are. Join us next time when we debate whether the individual mandate is indeed constitutional on It's Constitutional! Good night, everybody! <laughs> Keith Olbermann was fired by Current TV and will be replaced by former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer. Olbermann plans to sue for wrongful termination, but if your boss wants to get rid of you so bad he replaces somebody that lost their job because they were fucking a bunch of whores, you <laughs> 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 might just want to move on. <laughs> the MPAA blocked bullied children from seeing the movie Bully by rating it R, though they'll be admitted if they stop hitting themselves. <laughs> stop, hitting yourself. stop, hitting, stop hitting yourself. All right, you can see the movie. <laughs>
Oh, oh, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, that's the one with like all the architecture and stuff. Yes. Yeah, and then you can go there and you can buy stamps and mail your letters and then you uh, packages, you send those. No, that's the post office. Um, then I got that thing. Okay, you go there and, and, and it's, it's for praying. It's very exciting. Yeah, yeah, not ringing any bells. No, no. Okay, um, you, you, uh, it's Jesus' house. Jesus. Oh, is Jesus your trainer? So you train <laughs> uh, with this Jesus at a gym in his house? Um, okay, no. No? No, no that's not what happens. So it's, you know, it's, 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 a, it's God's house. It's, it's a place where we all go to pray. You know, where we pray. You know, come on. Gee, come on. Why has this got to be so hard? Come on, this, this, this is exciting for me, though. I'm excited. So it's as excited. Right? Before a game. Yeah. Yeah, I, I kneel down on one knee, right? And, and oh, I'm praying. Yeah. I'm praying. Well, I'm praying to Jesus. I got I got one question. Uh, you said praying. Right. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I express my faith to God. Yeah, you're still not reaching. Yeah, no, it's like uh, you're talking, but every fifth word is like Swahili or something. <laughs> the Giants won the Super Bowl last year. Yeah. Do you plan on destroying them next year? No. Yeah, well, the New York Giants are a very exciting team, off to a very exciting season, and, and I wish them well in Jesus' exciting name. Oh, yeah, 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 but you plan on destroying them, right? Yeah, I mean, if you wish them well, you can't wish Jesus helps them win the Super Bowl instead of you. Yeah, is he going to, like, train you both? Yeah, I mean, you can't both. <laughs> Jesus can't train both teams, right? Hey, 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 isn't it baseball season? Shouldn't you be working the kiss cam? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think so. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Say no. 
not Elizabeth. She is always taking time to compliment me for my housework. Wow. Well, you are a wonderful homemaker, and I would not want you to think that I didn't notice. Mm. I love you, honey. I love you, too. Uh, come on. There you go. <laughs> Megan is in the garage working on her cool fusion project. Yeah. And Mike was in the kitchen baking cookies for home ec. Jump in your mother's home. Oh, please, Mom, I was trying to make some cookies, but I burned them. I'll never make cookies as good as Dad does. Oh, <laughs> no, son. Just keep on practicing, and I am sure someday you are going to be every bit the housekeeper that your father is. That's my point. And if not, you know what? I don't think you're going to have any trouble finding a wife with a handsome face like yours. Oh, Mom. Um,
And I've come up with a few ideas of my own, and I came up with this form here all by myself. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, I know you guys are the pros, so just hit me with whatever you got, but uh, don't you forget, my vote hangs in the balance. <laughs> now it's time for our No Shit Sherlock segment. Uh, Nevada billionaire Sheldon Adelson said that Newt Gingrich is at the end of his line. Duh. <laughs> Two new studies have pinned the blame for catastrophic decline in bee numbers on a commonly used pesticide. Wow. Chemicals designed to kill insects are killing insects. Duh. <laughs> Finally, a new study shows that losing weight and improving fitness will ward off the mobility problems that older, overweight people experience. Hey, look! Water is wet. And that's <laughs> awesome. No shit, Sherlock segment. And now it's time to hear from a voice that we haven't heard from for quite some time. Hello, Americanites. I am Sarah Palin. I am asked why I haven't withdrawn my support for Newt Gingrich in favor of a candidate more likely to win nomination. You know, there are two gosh darn things that are in this world that I am also certain also. <laughs> Number one, Julianne Moore is a cunt. <laughs> you three. 